So you live in an apartment, you don't have a real recording studio and you think this is just not gonna work. Well, there's three types of noise that I hear on a lot of amateur recordings and I think for the most part, you can probably beat this thing. The first kind of noise is the reflections in the room. The second kind of noise is the din of stuff that's going on, like people walking by, traffic and stuff like that. And the third one is the vent noise. So let's tackle them one by one. And you know how I feel about this. If you're a creative person releasing stuff and putting yourself out there, I've got nothing but respect for you. Oh, and if you think stuff like this sounds kind of cool, be pretty cool. If you'd hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'd be notified and we can keep the conversation rolling. Number one. The reflections in the room. Now you can see I'm in a project studio. I've got room treatment. You don't need that. When I started out, blankets, hang them on the wall, do something, and don't forget the ceiling. It's not optimal to have a really dead space, but that's way, way better than getting all the reflections because once you record them, you'll never get rid of them and you'll never get that feeling of closeness from the vocal. You'll never get that level of engagement. That's the first thing. The second thing you can do is, here's a microphone. You see this thing? Looks like a heart. That's cardioid pattern. Sounds like cardio, like a heart. It makes the microphone here out of one side better than all the rest. So if you keep the microphone away from the wall and don't sing closely into the wall, position this in a way where if there's anything that you don't want to hear, it's towards the back bit. I have an air conditioner in this room and when it's only set to fan and it's behind the microphone, you can hear it in the room, but you can't hear it in the microphone. And my recording sounds super clean, even though I've got that going on. You can beat this thing. Two, the other thing you're gonna run to, especially if you live in a city, is just the, the kind of noise that's creeping in. The traffic, people walking by, and it's kind of like not events, it's just like this overall buzz of stuff happening. It's not gonna kill you actually. So when you're singing, as long as you're nice and close to the mic and it's much louder than the noise, the music tends to cover it up. But I'm gonna show you how to use a gate. A lot of you probably already know how to use a gate, but I'm just gonna run through it because if you take the noise out on the in-between, so in between you singing, even though there's still a little bit of residual noise left over, it tends to not really be noticeable, especially in the context of music. Is it perfect? No. But don't let that stand in the way of your creativity. Let's record something. Okay, let's show you how to use a gate real quick. I'm gonna use Ableton Live just to show you that stock plugins work really, really well. This is actually a really good gate. There are lots of good gates. They all work the same way. So what I show you here is gonna to apply to anything. Let's just start. So I made a little recording of myself standing outside. All right, I hear an airplane. So let's turn this gate on. Threshold, this sets the level at which the gate opens up. So it's Bring that up. See how the noise disappears? So the in-between noise is gone. The return is the level. Once it goes below this level, then the gate closes. So it creates silence again. So let's go to the end of this phrase here. All right, I hear an airplane. And so that is, once it gets to this level here, then the gate starts to close. The, the attack, set it all the way fast. And if there's a look ahead, you can turn that on. Attack just means as soon as it senses something, how fast does it open? Hold, let's not worry about that right now, especially if you're just getting started. Release is how quickly it turns the volume down when it's finished. So you'll see this line right here. Right, I hear an airplane. Let's say this is the gap between lines in a song. So we'd have to fix up this a little bit. Let's say this is the gap between lines in a song. Let's say this is the gap between lines. Let's say this is the gap between lines in a song. So that's pretty good. Of course, the other thing you wanna do, if you have time, depending on how much work there is to do, and don't be lazy about it, but there's nothing like just editing out the noise. It's super fast. So between those two methods, you should be able to get most of the noise out. So is there still noise on the vocal? Yes, there is, but if it's along with music, you're gonna find it's not as noticeable as you would think if it's within the framework of a track. Again, is it perfect? No, but let's get some recording done. Don't wait for perfect, let's be creative. Number three, you got a dog barking, you got a couple horns. You know what? That kind of sucks, but here's what you do. Cut the part more than once. You're probably gonna do that anyway. 
Comp it, take the good parts, put them together. The dog's not gonna bark every time you say the same word. Does it suck? Yeah, it kinda sucks. Don't let that stand in your way. You're gonna make something cool. Just muscle through it. I know so many people that have recorded in less than optimal circumstances, and there are so many recordings on actually really great records that aren't perfect, but the performances are awesome, the emotion is awesome. Let's just be creative and express ourselves and make it happen. Okay, now, Put something in the comments if I missed something. Is there something that you've run into that you've solved? Share it with us so we can all learn. And if you thought anything about this was kind of cool, give me a thumbs up. And let me leave you with this. Want to feel good today? Go do something nice for somebody. See you guys later.